What is happening and welcome to a, another Photography Talk episode. Now, hey, I get it. It's 2022 and on this, on this channel we talk about a lot of cameras like the R3 or the Canon R3, the R5, the Sony, this, the Sony, that. But today we're going to be talking about a camera that I've been using for the last month and a half that has become not a joke, it literally has become one of the most fun cameras that I've ever used. Yeah. But we're going to jump in the Wayback Machine to introduce this camera. We're going to jump in the Wayback Machine actually about 40 years. It's, well, you can see it hanging right there. You clicked on the title, so you know what camera we're going to be talking about here today. But it's this, the Canon AE-1. This camera, folks, man, this has been a lot of fun to use over the last month. Well, this is a obviously a film camera. It was uh, manufactured in 1976 and actually manufactured well into the 1980s. So, yeah, it's uh, it's an old one. In today's video, I'm going to be talking why I think this camera is an incredible camera for not only beginners, enthusiasts, but professionals as well. But before we get going with this, you know, friends, if you find some value with this video, do me a favor, hit that crush that like button down below because it, it really does help with the whole YouTube algorithm. That said, my friend, pull up a seat and let's go. All right, before we get into my more substantial list of, of reasons why I'm having so much fun with this camera here, you know, I'm gonna go with the superficial one here first. I have to say, tell me, this does not look like a gorgeous camera. To me, I absolutely, you know what's funny is, well, most of the time I head out, I have the R5 with me, uh, or the R6, or you know, some sort of Sony. I have never had people stop and give a compliment on, on the camera itself. Uh, and so this camera right here, I've had people actually, wow, you know, I used to have one of those or I learned photography on this. Wow, I haven't seen one of those in a long time. I get so much compliments and so much chatter with regards to this, this camera here. And plus, this, tell me this doesn't look awesome. This is a hold fast money maker uh, solo strap here. In, out of all my cameras, I think this camera really feels at home on the strap. I mean, it really looks fantastic. Any rate, now let's get on to some of the things I really like about this camera. Now, the first thing that really stands out with me on this camera here is how the shutter feels. It's not just how it feels, but it's the sound of the film forwarding, the sound of the shutter. And I'm not pressing it because I actually have a roll of film in here right now, but it's that mechanical, you know what, here. We'll do it together. Let me get something. Uh, we'll make use of this shot here. All right, there we go. Here we go. Tell me that is not so satisfying. I absolutely love the sound and the feeling of just that whole process there. Now we got a photo of a flower there. Now the next thing I really like about this camera, so obviously this is a film camera. There's no screen on the back, so there's no seeing what you're doing. So you have to resort to the viewfinder. Now many modern uh, DSLR mirrorless uh, cameras have these small little viewfinders. It's like looking through a peephole. This thing is a big, beautiful viewfinder that just is fantastic to frame up your shot. Now here's something pretty interesting about this camera right here. The A1 was the world's first camera with a CPU in it. Now, obviously, it's nothing compared to like the R5 or R6 or you know some of the other cameras that we've spoken about on this channel here. But for the day, this was groundbreaking. This was a big leap forward for camera electronics. Now, something else to uh, keep in mind, the A1 was also the first camera to have a shutter priority mode. And really, when you think about it, advanced modes like that made film cameras a much more easier option for beginners to use. Now, something to keep in mind here, this camera body is nearly all plastic. And even the silvery parts up here are a plastic material. And so that made this camera much lighter than a lot of the cameras from back in the day. And that kind of follows through to where we are right now. Uh, we're constantly talking about when we're talking about a new camera, 
usually it will bring up the weight of it and so forth. And so having a lighter camera body is gonna make this much more enjoyable to have around you or carrying around with you longer during the day. Now there's one other thing that I'm gonna bring up about this camera that I think is by far probably one of the bigger selling features. I'm getting these thorns all in my feet here. I love this area here, but there's these little bushes here that have these, they don't look like much, but these are a bunch of little thorns and they stick to your socks and make a mess of everything. And not to mention my finger has all these thorns in it right now, but um, anyway, one of the big selling points about this camera is the price. Now you can find these cameras all over the place. It's, it's funny because I was talking to a buddy last week uh, about this and this camera was you know, kind of equivalent to like the Honda Civic for cameras back in the day. So a lot of camera shops, there's a lot of these out in circulation, but you have to kind of look around to find one that's in good shape. Uh, a lot of camera shops will have them. I got this off of Amazon. Uh, it was for $296 or $299, and it came with a 50 millimeter uh, 1.8 lens. Now I Right away, I ordered a 35 to 105, which is what this is, off of Amazon. Now that lens was $127. It came in, it didn't have a lens hood on it. And so this is where things started getting a little tricky. I started shopping around for a lens hood for this lens. Boy, the lens hood, the, this is the BW72B, uh, if you ever wanna look that up. And I was surprised because these lens hoods, people were setting, selling between 30 and 50 dollars for these things and the 30 dollar ones they put on a 20 dollar shipping fee so you're still paying about 50 bucks for the just the lens hood and i'm like ah oh, okay whatever and so but then i found this guy on ebay selling a mint condition 35 to 105 uh for 47 dollars actually it was 51 dollars and i asked him a question and then he i didn't ask but he gave me a 5% discount or something like that. It dropped it down to $47. So I picked it up. So that lens came in with the lens hood, the lens in mint condition. It came with the original uh, kind of hard case that came with it. Um, and this lens is actually better shape than the one from Amazon. So the one from Amazon went back and I saved myself, geez, nearly 60 bucks off this lens. So I'm using the, uh, what's on it right now is the 35 to 105. So for 350 bucks is what I have invested into this camera right here. Tell me that is not a steal. Now, all you beginner photographers out there, this is going to be, I'm talking to you here. If you are currently shooting with a, just an iPhone right now, which is not a bad tool, an iPhone is a great tool to have. But if you're feeling motivated because you watch some YouTuber talking about a new camera that came out and you know what, I'll pause that just for a moment. There's, look, a moment ago I shared with you, I'm into this camera 350 bucks and it's in mint condition. Now granted film is a little pricey, uh, but a film camera, save yourself a few bucks. Go out there and buy yourself a nice film camera and put that money into the bank and, and save it. Learn the basics, learn the fundamentals of photography, learn how ISO, shutter speed, and uh, aperture work together on a film camera. It's gonna slow you down. Each shot, you're gonna be putting a lot more thought, a lot more just of you into that shot. And then when you're ready, go pick up whatever camera that you want. But in the meantime, you're gonna build yourself one hell of a strong foundation starting off with film or at least paving the way with a film camera. Now here's something else I really love about shooting with a uh, film here. Now with a digital camera, uh, you take a shot, you can take a look at the LCD and you know appreciate the photo that you just took right away. You have the instant gratification. Uh, with film, it's obviously, as I shared a moment ago, there's no LCD here. So it works a little bit different. And so you have, now, this film right here, this I'm up to 28 shots. Again, this is over the course of the last month. I've had, it's the same, the same role that's been in here. So uh, I have shots in here I've not seen for a month. And then when I drop this roll of film off, uh, depending upon, well, the days of going down to the street corner and finding a 24 hour uh, photo at every street, or 24 hour photo uh, development at every street corner is long gone. So these days, there's a few places I know here in town, I can head up to the, uh, close to uh, the airport, and there's a place up there that develops uh, pretty fast within a couple hours. Uh, but most places, you're gonna drop it off, they're sending it out, and it's gonna take a week or two weeks to get back. But where I'm leading with that is that just builds up 
the it builds up to when you get it in when you're reviewing those photos there's a lot more appreciation for the steps to getting to where you are where you're pretty where you're looking at the photos and it goes back to when you're taking the shots you're putting a lot more thought and now when you're this becomes a bit of a learning tool as well when you're looking over these photos you're really analyzing these because it took so long for these photos to get there you're really it becomes a good learning tool in other words, uh, good things happen to those that wait. And there's there's something about not knowing how your photos look until you get them developed. And think about it this way. Everything in our lives today is all about instant feedback. So it's nice to have a change of pace to have to wait. There's no instant feedback of an EVF and there's no do-overs or not easily at least. All right, let's shift gears and talk about our current giveaway. We have three excellent prizes up for the grabs this month. We have a 43-inch uh, newer collapsible reflector. That's a 5-in-1. We have a 128-gig SanDisk SD card and, of course, the old faithful $100 Adorama gift card. As always, entering the giveaway is really simple. Step one, like this video, subscribe to our channel. Step two, leave a comment below. In fact, friend, the more of our videos that you watch and leave a comment on, the more chances that you have to win. So get watching some other videos and leave some comments. Step three, register on Photography Talk and introduce yourself in the forum. Now, if you happen to register on the site during one of the last giveaways, you're still eligible to win. But man, as I keep saying over and over again, swing on by, post some photos, let us know how you're doing. And friend, that is it for complete details on the giveaway, including how to register on Photography Talk and how to say hello in the forum. Check out the description below. Good luck. And, uh, one other thing before we go jumping out of here today, um, if you like this sort of content, be sure to jump over to Photography Talk. Uh, sign up for a free account. It's free to do so. And over the course of the last 14 years, we have published well over 10,000 articles on the site. Everything from gear reviews, news, tutorials, tips, and you name it. Everything that you need to create your best shot. So head over to PhotographyTalk.com and get your free account. And just like that, we are done for today. Now it's that time of the video where I'm going to ask you to do all that YouTube stuff that is oh so valuable to the channel. So if you found some value with this video, hit that like button, crush it while you're at it, and hit that subscribe button if you're currently not subscribed, because friend, we would love to have you part of the family. And last but not least, hit that bell. Friend, you don't want to miss any of our videos, so hitting that bell is going to send notifications to you every time that we come out with a new video just like this. I don't know why I just did that, but anyway, you get the point. And so, anyway, friends, I'm going to... I actually have a bunch of these thorns in my, my, my socks here that are jamming into my leg. I'm going to pull these things out, then I'm going to head back to my studio, but you get out there, stay healthy, and take your best shot. <laughs>